to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Amen. On the second now, sing it out good and loud. Do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Have you sins that to man's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Sing now. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Amen. On the third. <clears throat> Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious what shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. All right, on the last now, sing a good and loud. Are you troubled at the thought of dying tell it to jesus tell it to jesus for christ coming are you sighing tell it to jesus alone tell it to jesus tell it to jesus is a friend that's well known you've no other such a friend or brother Tell it to Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. Good evening. That's good advice right there. You know, the is, I'm, I'm glad we can tell it to Jesus. And he'll listen. And he won't shove you away or something like that or tell you it's not important. I'm glad we can tell our burdens to Jesus. And we got traffic backed up on the interstate coming that way. And I've got text and stuff uh there are people that are on their way i uh, slowed them up a little bit uh that's why you're supposed to leave really early leave leave like you want to be here at 6 30 and uh then if you if you have a little time fellowship with people around you or come pray or something uh but it's good to see everybody here this evening god bless you for coming um uh, we've got i've got three or four text people sick this evening brother wayne uh caitlin andy uh some others uh, that said uh, all of a sudden just flu or something another like it or flu like symptoms and so uh, let's pray for them uh let's also pray for everything coming up uh, here in the next few days our sweetheart banquet saturday night uh the list is complete now i mean if you want to join now i guess you probably still can uh but if you're not coming we also need to know that immediately because we usually have sometimes people that cancel at the last minute and then they're done bought food and everything. So uh, we're excited about it. Looking forward to it. It's at six o'clock Saturday evening. And we have some of you men to hang around here tonight. As soon as church is over, uh, we're going to do just about 15 uh, before we go this evening. Now uh, we want to, we want to pray for the youth rally. We're going to have special prayer meeting. I've got, uh, we're talking uh, signs I'm having made, uh, banner worked on, flyers, uh, radio commercials. Uh, oh, my goodness. The chair, we have to borrow a few hundred chairs because uh, there's not enough over there. And just, oh, my goodness. The, it's, it's, just a, it's just a really, 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 the, uh, uh, March and April are by far, by far uh, the hardest months of the year for me personally and uh, of course it's a rewarding time too so let's pray for the youth rally pray that everything will fall in place the weather everything just it'll just uh, work out and fall into place real good if you do that i'd sure appreciate it now um let's pray for our country our, our country's in bitter uh we we would be considered right and so if we're right wing i guess they're wrong wing but uh you know we're
pro life, they're pro death. And that's right. Uh, amen. And so uh, let's let's uh, let's pray for our country tonight, for our leaders. Ask the Lord to help. Bless His will be done. And let's ask God bless the, the kids tonight. They're going to have something real special planned for them and everything. We've got a lot of special requests. So if you have something or somebody on your heart you'd like for us to pray for, let's do that right now. All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this evening, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have uh, to come before you in prayer. We ask you this evening that you would forgive us of all of our sins, everything we've said, everything we've done, every word we've spoke, every step we've took, every attitude, anything wrong or sinful or wicked about us, we ask forgiveness right now. Cleanse us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come to church tonight. I'm glad that we're able. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for a place that we have to come and meet together like this. I pray that you bless every single person. I pray for those that are sick, not able to get out tonight, all those that we've heard from and those that we haven't. I pray that you bless them in a great way. Do what ought to be done here tonight. I pray for all these special needs. You saw all these hands that were lifted up tonight. I pray that you bless them. Have you in our hearts. Do what ought to be done this evening. We'll thank you for it. I pray, God, for our country. I pray for our leaders that you'd give them enough sense to make the right choices and the courage to do it and that you'd send revival, Lord, in our land. I pray for our churches and pastors and missionaries and workers and teachers and evangelists. Lord, that you'd bless them. Bless our bus ministry. Lord, I pray that you'd bless every bus driver, every bus worker. Lord, I pray you'd uh, help, give us help. Lord, give us men, women uh, that'll work, drive buses, work, and help with the bus. God, put it in people's heart to do it, Lord. I pray you'd keep the buses rolling, keep them safe for the glory of God. Have you in our hearts. Do what ought to be done. And God will give you the glory for what you do. Help us now as we get in the Word of God tonight. Open our understanding that we may get wondrous things out of your Word. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right, now don't forget now we're going visiting Saturday morning, everybody. Uh, well, Saturday morning, good time of year to visit. It's sort of ugly weather, you know, people's at home, they ain't out gallivanting all over creation like they're going to be in the summer. So it's a great time to visit. Good time. You ain't got no garden out and you don't have to do, uh, you know, stuff like that. So good time to visit. This Saturday, we'll meet at 930. We'll split up. We'll just go every direction. So uh, don't forget that also. Okay. All right. And then uh, we're going to be having special men's prayer meeting here in the next few weeks uh, for youth rally. So you guys be ready for that probably sometime around the 1st of March. And then I'll be preaching revival and stuff right on through the spring. So uh, let's remember all that. But right now, let's take just a little time. Fellowship, everybody stand. Turn around and be friendly to everybody else. Come on now. Be friendly in the Lord.
right, just remain standing now. We'll do our offering. The kids are going to be getting ready to go to class this evening. Everybody standing now. Uh, let's all stand and uh, give this evening honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. Amen. And after the offering plates go, and y'all can go ahead and go, uh, kids of the class. They're going to split the teenagers tonight again. And uh, Mr. Fletcher's got something special for them. And I know they're going to be blessed. All right. Everybody ready? Amen. All right. What's ready to give tonight? Honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. Okay. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd bless this offering tonight. Let it be just what you want it to be. We love you. Lord, I pray that you'd meet the needs of our church. God, uh, send the, uh, the need in however you see fit, what way ever and however uh, you'd have us to do in the future with our plans. I pray that you'd meet the need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Let's get our let's get our Bibles open tonight. All right. Let's have a little Bible study this evening. Now um, we're going to go a little bit different direction here. A little bit. I'm trying to mix it up on Wednesday night so you don't just hear the same thing over and over and over. I know we got all kinds of subjects and topics I, I'm going to be dealing with in the next few weeks and. Uh, but, I mean, we just go any direction you can't miss. I was a preacher that's one time said, what would you like to preach on, Brother Dan? I said, anything the Lord tells you to, you can't miss in this generation. Uh, so uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about tonight something that's very controversial to some people, to a real solid Bible believer. It's, not, it's second nature. And uh, that is what the Bible says about... Uh, a Christian coming out and being separate from the rest of the world when you get saved and get right with God. And where that come from? Let's start in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and then we'll show you where that came from to begin with back in Leviticus. So you want to get 2 Corinthians chapter 6 with one hand and Leviticus with the other hand and hold your places there. Um, and we'll look sec, uh, many, many doctrine in the New Testament are repeats of the of Old Testament laws. Now, many of you have started reading your Bible uh, again, and if you've been coming through Exodus and Leviticus and uh, Numbers and all that, you see a tremendous amount of law. I just come through that part where all, the, all those chapters about that leprosy. Y'all read that already about those scabs and how to determine if it was real leprosy or what well, my goodness and you start thinking what in the world why is all this in the bible but remember all the bible wasn't written just for us here in the 21st century there was a lot of people lived before we got here and it was them and then you got to remember this you got to remember this I, and i've heard people say well the old testament don't apply to us uh that's that's a half truth actually jesus died on the cross and put what we call ceremonial law and nailed it to the cross. All the moral law is still binding because it's all repeated in the New Testament. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. To treat people right about lying, cheating people, adultery, murder. All of that is wrong for Christians. You can't say, well, Jesus died on the cross, so we're not under the commandments no more. Um, we're not for salvation, but we definitely are for our living. And it's got nothing to do with salvation, but it definitely got a lot to do with how you live. So ceremonial law, uh, that's why people say, well, the Ten Commandments was only Israel. No, nine of them were for everybody. One of them was distinctly for Israel, and that was the Sabbath day. That's the only ceremonial commandment. I'll get a lot of criticism for what I just said, but it's the truth anyway. Uh, you cannot put 
the Old Testament Jewish Sabbath day laws on New Testament Christians. If you did, you couldn't even go to work because you could only travel so far on the Sabbath day. and You couldn't have a fire. You couldn't cook food uh, if you really want to keep the Sabbath. All these people say they keep the Sabbath now. They're just, they're either crazy or just hypocrites uh, or both. And so uh, the ceremonial law was nailed to the cross, eating, washing hands, eating certain foods, certain observing certain days, nailed to the cross. Moral law, killing, stealing, lying, murder, whatever, is still and are repeated in the New Testament. Now, this doctrine is definitely repeated in the New Testament, and it's separation. Verse 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Wherefore, and he just got through talking about idols and the world and the wickedness, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now back to Leviticus. Leviticus, this is what we want to look at tonight. And uh, we're in Leviticus chapter number 18. Look at Leviticus chapter 18, please. And verse number one. Now you might wonder why God brought all them people out of Egypt. You just got through reading Exodus and you saw where God sent those plagues and he pulled out probably one and a half million people out of Egypt. Almost a million men and there had to be women and children. So one and a half million or 600,000 men, something like that. But anyway, conservative estimate, one and a half million people come out of Egypt. Look at, uh, and look what he told them, chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Now, look what he tells them, verse 3. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, I brought you out of it, shall ye not do. He said, I don't want you doing like them people in Egypt. Now, if you know the Bible, you know that Egypt in the Bible is a type of the what? The world of the old lifestyle. Egypt was once my home. I was a slave. You know, helpless and sin did roam. Love, light, decree. But when I looked up to heaven, Christ came to save and live in in Canaan now. You know, all them old songs about, I came out of Egypt, crossed over Jordan, living in Canaan. Egypt's a picture of the old life. And the Lord told them people, don't do like them people. And the next verse said, even the people where they is going, after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Now, uh, the kids are gone, and I don't want to be too plain tonight. I would read you some more of this chapter. This chapter gets mighty plain about stuff. And he proceeds to tell you why he brought them out of Egypt and why he destroyed those other lands. Have you all, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, that mean God of the Old Testament, if you wasn't one of them Jews, he just come in and killed all of you. He was mean. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. Those nations were so corrupt and so wicked, God said, I, I can't, I can't, I can't let this go on no more. And he had to judge them. And he used those, those Israelites coming out of Egypt as his sword and whip uh, to punish these people. He still does that. God uses people to punish other people. He uses your parents to punish you when you're here. He uses the cops to punish you. He'll use uh, the law to punish you. He, that's his belt that he uses. So to make, to make this as nice as I can, look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. Moreover, here's what those nations were doing. Thou shalt not lie carnally with a neighbor's wife to defile thyself. You're not supposed to lay down with somebody you're not married to. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. And now the Old Testament puts it, uh, un, it says uncover their nakedness to be polite and decent about it. 
And that way the people's going to say, oh, the Bible's vulgar and it has bad things. Kids can kids could read that and never even know what it's talking about. When it said, thou shalt not approach unto a, you know, thy near kins person, like you're, you're a near kinsman, you know what it's talking about. It don't, it don't mean, hey, how you doing? And when it says approach unto somebody like that, it's talking about physical, intimate, carnal, sexual relationship. Verse 21, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed, that your kids, pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord thy God. Of thy God, I am the Lord. Now, there's a lot of controversy about that. But Molech was a big god that they worshipped, and people actually sacrificed their kids in the fire to that. The modern day example of that would be people putting their kids out in the world and sacrificing them for money or to get rich or fame or fortune and especially all the other stuff that's going on that I won't talk about. Verse 22, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. That's homosexuality. It tells a man cannot lay down with another man like he lays with a woman. Notice again, the Bible's decent. It's not vulgar. It puts that so that anybody can read it and not be, but you're an adult. You know exactly what that's talking about. Now, listen, people, that's as plain as you want it right there. Thou shalt not lie. I didn't write it. My job is just to tell you what it says. There are videos and pe preachers going around now telling people that uh, you are, you're actually, some people are born gay, as they call it, LGBTQ, whichever one of them you identify as, and you, uh, that the Bible does not condemn that. Now, if that verse don't condemn it, I don't know how to read right. Uh, it, it, that's pretty plain. That's pretty plain. Uh, there's a fellow by the name of Matthew Vines. You might want to look him up. I think he's raised in church all his life, and he's going around giving talks. Uh, to, to large, the, the group, everybody listen, saying that homosexuality is okay, that if you're attracted to your same gender, that there's nothing wrong with that, and you should quit feeling guilty about it. And it's coming in church. And I'm telling you, if the Lord don't come another 20 years, it'll be normal, normalized in churches. Uh, as a lot. And I'm telling you, uh, it, it's, it's the Lord don't come. Verse 23 Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It's confusing. Now, that's just sickening to think about. But I, from what I've been told, we would absolutely be shocked to find out how prevalent that is in this country. I heard Brother Ed McAbee say years ago that people, uh, rich people in Texas meet together and have all these big parties in big million dollar homes and they bring in what they call party dogs, big German shepherds about that big and they all party with the dogs. And that's what sin will do. It's everywhere in this country. In movies, they bring it out and mention it in movies. It, listen, God destroyed those nations for that. I know, to me, I mean, we want to throw up, just think about something like that. You'd be shocked You'd be shocked. And I don't, I'm not saying look it up. I've never looked it up and I'm not planning on it. I don't want to, I don't want to see it. I don't want to know it. I don't want to know no more. I've already heard. But that's, God said, that's why he destroyed those nations. It is confusion. Verse 24. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you and the land is defiled. Now look at this. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. That kind of living makes the land puke and vomit out the inhabitants. I want to talk about it tonight, and that'll be the worst I'll say. We'll bring it back home to me and you tonight and say, uh, first, he brought us out. When you get saved, you come out, or you're supposed to. I, I don't know anything about any kind of salvation where a person never comes out of anything. 
uh, I know you're not saved by coming out. You're not saved by repenting. You're saved by believing. You're saved by, by faith in Jesus Christ. I believe a lot of people get saved before they ever get to the altar. I believe that. I believe the second you put your faith in what Christ did for you on the cross, and his, his righteousness is imputed to you. And I don't. I, I think you say, well, don't you have to quit sinning? you got to be willing to. You, you're, you're that. But you get into all this argument about repentance and stuff. It's all wrapped up in one. There's a change of heart. I, uh, you can't tell me you get saved and there ain't some kind of change in your attitude towards sin. That don't save you. Don't get me wrong. That don't save you. I, I, a man said, well, did you repent? I said, yeah, did you repent of all? Did you quit completely sinning? No. You never completely quit sinning. But I'll tell you one thing, buddy. There's something moves in inside you. And when you get when you get the Lord, the Holy Spirit in you, he'll convict you of sin and deal with you in sin and pull on you to come out. Um, I, 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 you know, uh, there, there's a reason. There's a reason the Lord pulled them people out of Egypt, people. There's a reason. That's a picture of salvation. When Paul met the Lord on the road to Damascus, he completely turned around and went the other way. When the disciples met the Lord, you know what it said? They left their nets. What's that saying? That's saying that whatever you're into, when you get saved, you want to leave it and follow the Lord. There, there's Our generation, there's something wrong with this generation of Christians. We have a whole generation of Christians where half the movie stars claim to be saved and still stay in Hollywood and make dirty movies and everything and say, well, it's just my job. There's something wrong with that kind of thinking. Something very wrong with that kind of thinking. I'm not the judge. I can't judge who's saved and who ain't. Don't, I don't want, I got enough worries about keeping Brother Danny straight. I'm a full-time job keeping me straight. But I'm telling you, God said, come out. I just, I can't, I can't wrap my head, as they say, around a Christian saying, okay, I'm in this movie and I got to do this naked scene and then in bed with somebody. And they say, well, I thought you was a Christian. Well, I, I, I am a Christian, but this is my job. Something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. Uh, there's something wrong with somebody who says, I separate my Christianity from my job or my life. Something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. that we see it all the time in the senators and congressmen. Lord, I don't want to get off on all of that. I, whoo, Lord, help God have mercy on us. The, the, the absolute cartoon show we've been exposed to the last, that's, I'm, I'm going to try my best not to get off on all that. I'm going to get off on something else. So, uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, the, the, the politicians say that, well, I personally believe that I don't agree with same-sex marriage or I don't agree with abortion or whatever, but my constituents that put me here expect me to vote a certain way and I vote a certain way. I don't think God lets you make that distinction. That's like saying, well, the Lord knows I love him in my heart, but I sell drugs to keep my family up. There's no difference in that. I was, I was thinking about Coach Newton over here. Him and Todd uh, got the uh, marina over there on the lake. If any of y'all go to Lake James, this will be your third. Is this your third summer? They bought the marina over there, and they run it. And they, I mean, there's thousands of people out on that lake every day in the summer. And they opened it up. It had been a business a long time ago, and they got it going. And uh, when Carrie told me, she said that they'd tried their best to pressure them into selling alcohol, and they both said no. Am I right? You ain't changed that, right? Uh, I, listen, and I want him to not be proud of him. I respect him for doing that. And I'll tell you something else. God will bless you for it. Oh, okay, okay. A little, little marijuana. Uh, no, they don't sell alcohol. Todd won't do it. And I appreciate, I respect, Todd, had, they have these big, big get-togethers where some big shop people come in, or them motorcycle people and everything, and Todd and them said, nope, ain't going to be no alcohol at our house, because I beat it in Carrie's head, and she beat it in his head, and uh, and, and and their kids, they said, our kids ain't going to be around that. I, I'm going to say something here that I don't want to make nobody mad, I am hope I'm wrong, um, if, if you had to get a, a job somewhere to feed your family, I wouldn't condemn you for it. But I don't think you ought to have a job where you have to sell 
handle or sail. You wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to drive a beer truck. Would you? I, and and I'm saying I, I don't. If a man's trying to feed his family, I don't condemn him. That's between him and God. But I've had a lot of people ask me. They'll say, "Brother Danny, I've got a job waitressing, and and they serve alcohol." I said, "Do you have to serve it and hand it to people?" I say, "Yeah." I don't, I don't want to do that. No. I would. I wouldn't want my kids doing it. I would. I wouldn't want my grandkids around. I'm not. I'm just saying. There, there's, there's a certain standard somewhere that we touch not the unclean thing. Now, I, there's a lot of wiggle room on some stuff, and I'm certainly, if you had to take a job to, if you're starving, you had to feed your kids. You know, I, I wouldn't. I, you know, between you and God, it's almost impossible to work somewhere where something ain't going on wrong. <laughs> That's almost impossible. You have to be in the world, but not of the world. But if you can possibly get out of it, you should not partake. Uh, it'd, be like, it'd be like I run a camera. If I was a cameraman for a, for a dirty movie, and I said, well, I ain't doing it. It ain't nothing to me. That's just my job. Don't you think it'd be better if a Christian had another job? <laughs> Come on. You want to get on the Super Bowl? I'm a fixing to. Don't bow your head neither. I'm a fixing to. I'm looking to see who's looking guilty in here tonight. No, I did not watch it. Yes, it popped up on my phone 50 times of people saying this, 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 and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. I watched the last part of the ball game, but not that, not the horror show. That was in between second and third quarter. All right. Come on, Brother Danny. Pray. Amen. Never has it been like nowadays than, than like it is now. If you believe in Bible separation, you're immediately labeled legalist. Immediately. And the people like that don't even know what a legalist is. A legalist is people who believe you are saved by keep, keeping the law. It's part of your salvation. Legalism has nothing to do with dressing decent, not cussing, and not, you know, stuff like that. I think got nothing to do with legalism. I understand they're Pharisees. I understand people go overboard. There are a lot of self-righteous people in this world. Don't I don't want us to be self-righteous. You're not supposed to say, oh, I'm better than you, and I'm better than this because I don't do this, I don't do that. But Lord have mercy, people. Uh, come on now. Come on, really. Uh, the Lord said, don't do like them nations do. Don't do it. I, 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 uh, we got home Sunday night. And, you know, I like, foot, I like football one time a year. I like, when, that's Super Bowl. I like, because it's exciting. I like baseball one time a year at the World Series when it comes right down to it. You know, I thought, man, I like to see that team come back and win that game the other night. That was, that was exciting. I liked it. And I ain't crazy over football, but I like to see a comeback. I couldn't care less who won, but I would rather San Francisco not, just because it's San Francisco. But, uh, uh, but, but I and, and I have no other reason for believing that or even feeling that way. I couldn't care less. But I, I will. I like. I like to see them throw it ball and catch it, man, and throw them long passes. That's exciting. And there's nothing wrong with the, the sport, the game. But that thing's got, they said years ago, the first football halftime show at the Super Bowl was somebody played a trumpet or something, like Al Hurd or something. <laughs> I mean, a long time ago, look what we turned into now. And that, turned, that started uh, Justin Timberlake, that thing with the Janet Jackson, remember that, 15, 20 years ago, and it's gradually devolved, degraded into what we saw the other night. Or you, you saw, some of you. I hope you did. I, I told Ethan when we got home, I said, he turned it off during halftime. We got home. I think it was right as the second half was about in it. So I turned the TV on, and I went down there. Molly, Ethan was in his room, and Molly was. I said, Molly, you got to turn that off. And I, and I went and saw the TV, and I saw this girl. I thought it was Beyonce. I told, I told Kelly, I said, Beyonce's on there dancing. And, and so I saw it for a couple of seconds, turned it off, and then stuff started popping up on my phone. Old Ben Shapiro, 
I don't know if anybody knows who Ben Shapiro is. He's a smart little cracker, buddy. I'm telling you, that guy's got, he is absolute genius. Rush has got cancer bad. Maybe the Lord will raise up somebody like him, take his play. That guy's, and he's not even saved. He don't even believe in Jesus. He's dumb there, but he's smart in every other area. He's got a brilliant mind. I tell you, two people, him and Candace Owens. If you've never listened to Candace Owens, I'm telling you, the girl's brilliant. She's absolutely brilliant. I'd vote for her president uh, after four more years. And uh, 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 I'm, I'm not going to get into all of that, but I do want to say this. If you are a man, oh, uh, listen, I wish every man on Sunday morning, said, if you're a man and you watched filth during halftime, you need to ask the Lord to forgive you and you need to ask your wife to forgive you. You do. And, I, and I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be self-righteous. I'm as wicked as you are. I didn't watch it, but it ain't because I'm so right. I'm full of the devil just like you are. You can't put that in front of a man. What do you think? Do you think they let them two girls get on there and sing because of their talent of singing? Come on. That had nothing to do with voice talent. Nothing. You can pick somebody off of streak singing good today. They were not on there for singing. They were on there for this strict reason of entertaining the lustful flesh and desires of wicked men and women. If you're a woman and you watch that, you need to ask forgiveness. Not as bad as your husband, unless you're a lesbian. And and not as bad, but you still need to. I Listen, people, am, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Somebody somebody tell me, Brother Danny, you're wrong. I mean, you know how some people watch stuff like that and don't think nothing about it? I'm going to tell you why Christians can watch that stuff. And I hate to think this, but the only way you can watch that and not think it's wrong is you're used to watching a lot worse. You must be used to watching a lot worse. God help us if you are. God help us if you are. That shows three things. Number one, it shows how we as a nation have sunk in our morals. It was inviting little kids, boys and girls. I heard, I don't know how many people say, well, we had to tell our kids to leave the room. Why, why would you tell them you leave the room? Now, we can watch this, but you can't. They're going to be peeping around. I said, what's the, what's the big deal here? I, I ain't right. You know what y'all date? Daddy ought to say, turn it off, turn it back on when third quarter starts, and we'll watch the rest of the game. That's what you ought to do. And I hope that's what you've done. Uh, and I ain't trying to beat you up over it, but you, you can't, you can't. What that was is it invited America, kids, teenagers, and everybody into a sleazy nightclub, a stripper pole. Really, people? Really? Is that necessary for family entertainment? That shows how that shows how filthy uh, how we've sunk in this country to a new low, a new low when that's considered family atmosphere. You you invited your family into a sleazy, greasy strip club, y'all. How many millions of men were sitting there and burned in lust? And then went out over that city that night. You know there was hundreds and hundreds of kids sold at the Super Bowl as young as nine, some of them to 20 different men. As young as nine, 10, 11, 12. That's, the Lord said that's the doings of these nations and that's why I brought you out. That's why I brought you out. He said I'll destroy them. If... If a man went out that night and raped a little girl, 12 or 13, say what you want to. They're going to have a part in that one these days at the judgment. People say, well, I watched it and I didn't go out and rape nobody. Well, that don't mean that, don't mean that somebody else did some deranged, wicked, perverted guy. That just give them a little push. There's been story after story of a man watching a movie or, or dirty book, something like that, and went just riding down the street, burning with lust, like I preached on the other Sunday, and and saw a little girl walking down the street, and grabbed her and raped her, and the and the the movie pushed him. They said, "Well, I I listen to rock music, and I ain't never murdered nobody." Well, you ain't you wonderful? Uh, it, what about all the crazy people have? Crazy people have. It shows 
how backslid Christians are. That's what it shows. It shows uh, our nations have sunk. It shows how backslid Christians are. And it shows how blind we are as to good and evil. It sure does. It shows how blind we are. They parade women dressed like whores, according to the Bible. Like whores. I didn't say they were. I said they were dressed like them. And then wonder why men exploit women and children. They wonder why men just treat women like objects. But duh. Wonder why. Wonder why. You know what somebody told me? They said, that one girl, she's 50 years old. My goodness, she's worked hard for that body. She should be allowed to show it off. That's how ignorant some Christians are. You ought to work hard, keep yourself fit, but not sell it. It's to exploit women and children. Franklin Graham wrote a tremendous article about it. Did y'all see that? I, I wish I had it on my phone. Uh, 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 grab my phone off my desk, Jeff. And he wrote a tremendous article. I pr I'm proud of Franklin Graham. He's not crazy. He ain't no independent, spitting, hollering, fundamental, fanatical, King James Bat. He, he ain't even like that. But he got enough sense to know how degraded our country has, has become. I'm going to see if I can find it. I think Carrie sent it to me, or Christy, maybe. I, one of them two. They keep me up to date, Carrie and Christy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll try to get it, and yep, here it is. It's coming. Let me read you just a little bit of it. I won't read all of it, but uh, Frank Graham, Billy Graham's son, wrote, quote, I don't expect the world to act like church. Don't expect it. But our country has had a sense of moral decency on primetime television in order to protect children. We see that disappearing before our eyes. It was demonstrated tonight in the Pepsi Sugar Bowl, Super Bowl halftime show. I don't know what it had to do with Pepsi, but with millions of children watching. This exhibition was Pepsi showing young girls that sexual exploitation of women is okay. That's what he said. This is Pepsi showing the world that sexual exploitation of women and girls is okay. With the exploitation of women on the rise worldwide, instead of lowering the standard, we as a society should be raising it. I am disappointed with Pepsi and the NFL. That's exactly how I'd feel. Exactly how I'd feel. And I can't even read you the other one about the trafficking of the kids. I think Christy sent me that. Now, sometimes if you're separate, you'll be lonely. Like him and uh, other people said, you'd make a lot more money on lake, you know, if you'd sell alcohol. Well, let me tell you something. Making money ain't the most important thing in the world. Being right is. If you can be right and still make money, great. If you have to do wrong to make money, no. Because God can take it away from you just like that. The Lord can take it away. Um, you know, uh, he said a governor years ago, his girls come in one time and they wanted a hairdo, some wild hairdo the world had come out with. Lord, that's probably just cutting it way back in them days, cutting it real short. And uh, they said, Daddy, can we get our hair done like they are? And he said, whose daughters are you? They said, we're the governor's daughters. He said, you don't follow the styles. You set them. And you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, and we shouldn't allow or want our children to want to follow the styles. And he goes, I know, I know, I fought that battle. I raised three girls. And I didn't always win. I didn't. You, you don't want to be too strict on them, but you don't want to be too late. They want to wear blue jeans. With, technically, there's nothing wrong with blue jeans. Hold on. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, there's no, As long as they don't show you nakedness. They want to wear a certain kind of shoe. They, but now there's certain shirts with pictures. There's shirts with, with stuff on that they shouldn't wear. I don't like raggedy jeans in church, especially. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can't say it's wrong. I can't say it's wrong. Bible don't say anything. But I, I've had some raggedy ones myself, but not on purpose. <laughs> but we used to wear holes in ours. Mom was ironing them patches on. You remember them real stiff patches? So that, I can't say it's wrong, but you can say it's wrong if they got a girl on a motorcycle with hardly nothing on. You can You can say that's wrong. Amen? You can say that's part of the world 
if they, you know, let's let's go back to chapter 17. We'll go back to chapter 17. Uh, this is just principles. In verse 7, it said, They shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils. What in the world that mean? I don't, I don't know uh, about all of that. And then uh, there's another. Uh, yeah, look at chapter 19 and verse 28. Look at chapter 19, verse 28. Here's another thing, and I'm about through, y'all, so just stay with me here. I, mean, I got some other things to talk about. John Newton said, never go to a place where there is not room for your Lord. Never go to a place. Uh, I, heard, I heard a guy, a preacher went to visit him one time, and the preacher said, now you leave that Bible and God out there and come on in. And the preacher said, I ain't coming in. If you don't let him in, I ain't coming in. If they tell you you can't pray here, you can't bring Jesus in here, say, see you later. Don't go nowhere you can't take the Lord. Don't go nowhere you can't take the Lord. Um, look at chapter 19, verse number uh, 28. Talk about tattoos. Here's your verse. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. He told them people don't print marks on your flesh. And he said that for a reason. Does that apply to a New Testament Christian? No. But there's a principle there. The principle there is one of the marks of the heathen. If you go to a, the jungles, there's tribes that ain't never seen a, a civilized country. One of the marks of the heathen is uh, they, they paint their self. They paint their self all over and mark their body. Um, it, it, if you got a tattoo, I'm not judging you or saying you're sinning or nothing, but there's a principle that we don't follow every every fad that comes out of Hollywood and shouldn't. Now, it's almost impossible. You know, I mean, I ain't got on bell bottoms. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this kind of pants. There's certain things that I don't have on, you know, the real wide ties everybody used to wear, wide ties, skinny ties, wide ties. That I'm, not, I'm talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about this, anything that crosses a moral line, a moral line or a scriptural line. Now, um, they, they said this, all the water in the world, however hard it tried, could never sink a ship unless it got inside. All the evil in the world, the wickedness of sin, can never wreck one's life unless it gets within. The world out there can't hurt us. What hurts churches and us is when it gets in us. Okay? Uh, sometimes you'll be lonely. Sometimes you won't have nobody to hang out with. They said, oh, uh, Jenny Lynn, I don't know if you ever heard of Jenny Lynn. She was called the Swedish Nightingale, sung opera and got rich, and right in the middle of her career, she just quit and never went back. And nobody couldn't figure out why she quit. She was at the top of her career, world known, wide known. And somebody found her sitting out on the sunset at the water in the mountains reading the Bible. And they said, why'd you quit? Why'd you quit? And she said, every day I was in it, it made me think less of this and nothing of that. The sun, the mountain, the mountain. She said, every day I was in that lifestyle, it made me think less of this. And I'll tell you how you can judge anything in the world is how it makes you feel about your Bible. If it cools off your desire for God and holiness, then it's the world. That's, why, that's the definition of the world. Amen. It cools your affection for Christ. Anything that cools you off for the Lord. Okay? All right, uh, I'm I'm stopped. You can turn that thing off now, and we'll take a comment or two. We'll take a comment or two since we're all here and we're all. And then I hope I didn't hurt nobody's feelings or make you mad tonight. If I was wrong, 